Zelda fans, now that we have the Tears of the Kingdom main theme, I thought it'd be fun to do a massive compilation of all of the title and main themes from Zelda's all the way back in 1986 to today. I'm Kevin, and welcome to Zelda Music Theory. Welcome to Director's Cut. Let's go! I can't believe we're already at 10,000 subs. I posted my first video February 11th, 2023. And we're already at 10,000 subs. It's crazy. Thank you guys so much. Without further ado, get your headphones. Let's go. By the way, this is kind of the birth of this whole flat seven, flat six vibe that we get from Zelda so often. I'll eventually do a video on this. I kind of call these the Zelda chords. So it starts off with. So what is that doing in the key of B? As we eventually get. How much mileage have they gotten out of that little theme? Oh my goodness. grow up like playing this game and uh, watching all the items and the story and stuff this game was just enthralling to me as like a six-year-old or something um, it was before I was born but I grew up with it um, what's really interesting is this it's in a, mi a major key right or in B flat major and so that's why all these other chords that don't belong sound so interesting and kind of majestic Gotta love the counter melody too. Uh, Koji Kondo, who composed this, um, did a fantastic job with very limited channels on, you know, he's got a bass line, he's got a melody line, he's pretty much got one note in between, and that's it. Everything else is used for like sound effects and fairies and hearts and, you know, rupees and things like that. So fascinating what he does. I won't slow it down too much to go all the way into it, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so he goes places, right? I mean... And we go, oh, I guess we're in the key of uh, D flat the whole time, right? That B flat is really just the uh, relative minor, and finally we've landed. But then he goes... What is a, I guess, C flat? <laughs> it's a, it's B major, but it's the flat two. Then we get this chord out of nowhere. And circles back to B flat major. Hmm. 
Let's see. I've never actually figured that out before, so. So it's interesting because I, for me, I hear a fully diminished. I hear all four notes, um, right, which loops. And kind of stop it and start it anywhere. But for me, it's going to the five chord. So it's like this. Resolving to, and then looping back to E flat major. So what I hear is, I guess, E leading into F, right? Let's run it back real quick. All right, pretty strong. Uh, it starts on an E and it ends in an E, right? But I think it goes... Kind of fascinating. Uh, we'll keep moving. Another flat two chord. So true story, I was taking high school music theory uh, when I was about 16 or 17, and we learned about secondary dominance. So we're, we're in this key, and we end up playing this to get to this and then look back to one. And when we first learned about secondary dominance, I went, that's what happens at the end of Zelda. I literally had like an epiphany, like, ah, I do know that sound from something that I know. And that's kind of been my history with uh, music theory in general, right? I'm not always excited about the stuff we learn, <laughs> but if it relates to something that I already like, I'm already interested in, then yeah, I'd like to understand it better. So for me, I've always approached music theory from what music do I enjoy listening to? And how can I better understand that? And here we get what's called a secondary dominant. So instead of, what key are we in? B flat major? So normally that would be C minor. But here we get a C major dominant, which resolves really nicely back into F, which resolves really nicely back into B flat major. So it's kind of like Koji Kondo knows he wants to end up on F dominant seven so he can lead back into B flat. And so because of that, he goes backwards, reverse engineers, and says, well, let's find a chord that's going to pull really strongly back to F. And so he creates C major dominant 7 to lead back to F, back to B flat. Not uncommon for musicians to do that, but it's beautiful. And this is the first time I heard it. By the way, um, let's see. Gosh, I'm so bad at piano. <laughs> right, first, uh, first chord of Super Mario Bros. The original Overworld theme, ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum -bum, is a secondary dominant. It's a two dominant seven chord. Actually, has a nine on it. Anyway, let's check out the Overworld theme. So worth noting, uh, in this and also in the original Mario theme, um, Koji Kondo really likes this sort of tension or energy between the dum da 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 dum dum and dum da 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 dum right four and three don't really uh align very easily and so our ears are kind of like whoa what was that um and here he has kind of the triplets going in the bass with um 16th notes in the uh melody which is really a nice we get the same thing in mario bum 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 ba dum bum right um just the live upbeat kind of makes it feel more adventurous we're not gonna get into the chords because we've already done that with the the title theme but beautiful, totally sets the mood well for Zelda. It's 
simple, right? There's not that many notes going on at once, but it works together so beautifully. It's like there's no wasted energy. It's much harder to, to compose a really simple, beautiful piece than it is to compose something that has all kinds of stuff going on. It's easy to throw notes on the page. It's harder to take them off. You guys know what time it is. Zelda 2. I love this one. So already we've got the one flat seven flat six five leading back to one. Some call it the Andalusian cadence. You can look it up. Hit the road jack. There's some other stuff out there, but um, Mario does a lot of flat six flat seven one. Zelda does one flat seven flat six five. They do a little bit of both, but that's the the dominant uh, feature of each game. <laughs> Oh, what a wholesome change, right? We did not expect that. What is it? It's sixth, maybe? Beautiful. Sixth, third, harmonization. Beautiful. Impa. Wow. I did not know Impa came from uh, the Adventure of Link. What else came from this game? By the way, throw in some fun facts. I don't know that much. I mean, I grew up playing this one. I never beat it. I finally got the hammer at some point and was like, finally can get through that big boulder. And then I think I got lost. This game actually takes forever. <laughs> um, so I've never beaten this one, but uh, I've heard most of the music. I love the town theme. I love the Hyrule Temple theme. Um, used in Melee, of course. But uh, if you guys have any fun facts about Zelda just in general, feel free to leave them in the comments. So what chords are those, right? Okay. Right. Or do you think that, that it is? I'm doing my face again. I always make that face when I want to, like, oh, check it out. So it's flat six. By the way, where else do we hear that? Um, okay. If you haven't recognized by now, you're probably not going to. Wind Waker's opening. Beautiful. Uh, kind of similar chords, kind of playing with that flat six to five, right? A little bit of one, flat seven, one. Really cool stuff. Okay, 
Yeah, this overall theme is actually legit. How cool is that? Wow. We've changed key. Now we're in F instead of um, G. This is Mixolydian, so we're in F Mixolydian. Check it out. So we get flat sevens, but major thirds. So you kind of get a dominant from one. That's Mixolydian's got this kind of, in my opinion, kind of like a chill, grooving sound. There's less harmonic pull, and it's a little more like set in its grooves just to, to hang out there. And it sounds really cool. Wow, so we've gone up a fourth in a really cool way. Two chord, interesting. Oh, I think it goes. A little chromaticism. Interesting. Um, we've ended up going five to one, but it somehow feels like we're not quite in the right key because <laughs> the way they've moved around. Gosh, that was my like favorite lick as a kid. That was so cool. Let's see. So that's Dorian mode, which would make sense because we're going from kind of an F major sound, even though I said it was Mixolydian. Right, that's Dorian mode, very evocative of this kind of like sort of sad, maybe hopeful, maybe cool, interesting, very emotional sound. Dorian mode is probably my favorite mode of all those seven major scale modes. Um, so yeah, we get, let's see, G minor seven. And then during that we get a, I can't play it fast enough, but let's check it out. By the way, um, so even that is in, well, there's a fourth in there, but it's harmonized towards, towards a G minor seven um, arpeggio or scale or chord. Uh, beautiful. Okay. One more time. One more time. Beautiful. Gosh, that's an amazing overall theme. I know this game was a little bit less popular, but they still did a phenomenal job with a lot of the things, including the music. There's a bunch of other music from this that I love. Oh! You guys recognize that? Hey, listen! <laughs> you guys know where I got it from. Uh, Link to the Past in many ways is kind of like the genesis of most of the themes that we have today. King Hyrule's theme, Zelda's Lullaby, Great Fairy theme, Kakariko Village, Ganon's theme. There's so many that are woven all throughout the series that actually started in this game and a lot of them I thought were from Ocarina of Time and then like 10 years went by and someone was like by the way you know that's actually in A Link to the Past right I was like what I think Ganon's theme I just learned like last year was it was from this I thought it was from like Wind Waker um anyway uh, this opening sequence is amazing I did learn on a piano
Actually, I don't think. Hold on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. Try that again. Or if you grew up with Ocarina of Time. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, uh, probably most of you don't know this, although a few of you do. If you know where I'm headed, go ahead and comment and be like, I knew what he was talking about. Ocarina of Time. Great Deku Tree is explaining the origin of Din and Favor and Nehru and all of these, and um, it plays sort of this theme, but instead of going one minor three four back to one, instead it goes. Oops. Uh, Major seven chord, beautiful. Oh, let me pull it up real quick. A lot of ways it is kind of like a link to the past but more beautiful a link to the past had kind of the zelda formula right for a lot of people that was their first zelda game it was the one that pulled everything together um in their dungeon style their items their music um the the style of coloring and characters and stuff a lot of the things from a link to the past were carried through all the other games so ocarina of time in a lot of ways is a link to the past but more beautiful more robust 3d but we're not going to skip the best part Mm, so I'm a huge fan of major seven chords, and this piece is one of the um, the best pieces that I know from Koji Kondo on how he uses major seven chords, and his pattern of using one five one in the left hand, and then thirds and sevenths in the right hand. Check this out. Not even an ad night, it's suspended uh, two. Again, a couple of uh, suspended twos or major sevens. Right? Uh, I'll see if I can keep up with it. Oh my gosh. Right? Check it out. What chord is that? Major 7 chord with 1, 5, 1 in the left hand. And the 7th and 3rd in the right hand. Right? Then he moves down. 
What is that? G minor 7. But we get 1, 5, 1 in the left hand. 7th and 3rd in the right hand. What is that? C dominant 7, where 1, 5, 1 is in the left hand, 3rd and 7th in the right hand. And the way it's actually kind of a mathematical thing when you go on 2, 5, 1s, the 3rd and 7 are kind of related. They, they kind of swap, which is really cool. Let's play it a second time. Oh my gosh. Okay, so second time it goes through. What is that? One, five, one in the left hand, seven, three in the right hand. Beautiful. miss that note um beautiful the way it loops and then immediately goes back into four four instead of three four right did you guys notice that we dropped to three four all of a sudden and then suddenly we're in <laughs> fourth try <laughs> Well, that wasn't a multiple choice question. Miss three in a row and get it on the fourth try. Okay, let's keep going. The classic, the greatest game of all time. Oh my goodness. Guys, I remember the first time I saw this. It was very memorable. Um, you guys probably have your own memories. We had just gotten it. It was like 1997 or 8. It was around Christmas. And we turned it on and we were like, like, this is how far they've come. This was for sure the biggest jump in graphics from the two-dimensional, a little bit better than the original, um, A Link to the Past, suddenly to this. It was insane. Um, and this opening sequence is beautiful. Check this out. Lots of uh, nines, sixths, sevenths, major seven chords. Amazing. Which I'm sure almost all of you guys watching know is the from the original Zelda. That's actually the recorder, which you need to defeat the, beat the game. Um, for me, this is an amazing callback to, hey, music has always been elevated for us, for Zelda. It's been not just off to the side, but it's been integral. We gave up one of our four available tracks in order to have sound effects be one of them. So music interacting with the game, right? Uh, one of the things you need to beat the game as an item is a musical instrument. And so they started it with that. It appeared in A Link to the Past. It appeared in some other stuff. Here it's Ocarina of Time. I mean, the whole game is based on music. And the opening tells us, hey, we didn't forget our roots. This game, if you enjoyed that, you're going to get so much more of it. It's beautiful. You guys recognize that? One, five, one. What are those notes? Seven and three. 
Same thing, one, five, one in the left hand, seven, three in the right hand. Amazing. To end, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, there's a really cool Easter egg to another game that I'll get into in a second. Okay, so I was messing around with this uh, probably a year ago, around the time I was thinking about starting the channel, and I almost started with this as a short, and I was like, nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about. Check this out. Um, and then it goes. Are you kidding me, right? What's mind-blowing about that is it's in the same key. That piece, uh, Dearly Beloved from Kingdom Hearts, is in E-flat. Let me pull it up. So just real quick, right? I mean, we had. Unbelievable. Okay, Ocarina of Time doesn't really have like a main theme, so let's do Zelda's Lullaby. How beautiful. I did a project that's in college, and this is uploaded to my Patreon, the kind of a how to play, there's MIDI and everything. I break it down for like 15 minutes. A little sleight of hand from Kochi Kondo. Check that out, right? I mean, what key are we in? You keep hammering home C, so you kind of think you're in like C Lydian, maybe? Right, but then almost immediately it goes. And you go, oh, okay, that's a G major chord. And it becomes evident, oh, that was just a C major chord. And F sharp is actually in the key of G major, so it makes sense. And then out of nowhere, he ends up on this chord. And instead of going here, he goes. What? <laughs> oh, beautiful.
gorgeous. There's a uh, German augmented six, if anybody's studying music theory. Uh, the second time it goes, let's see. <laughs> So if we're trying to end up on G major, we end up with a D dominant 7, but before that we get a... That's where we think we're headed. But instead, uh, it goes... And then we get a D minor 7, which is in the key of C major. And we end up with a G dominant 7, leading back to C. We go, okay, I guess we are in C, only to move back down to... You go, oh wait, are we in G? It keeps just moving back and forth. It avoids resolution. We get a five chord that doesn't have the root. We get a one chord that doesn't have the root. It's like the softest landing ever, and it just loops perfectly. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite pieces ever. Majora's Mask. Was a creepy game, wasn't it? But like in a good way, like a dark... I don't know. Emotional. Very underrated. <laughs> so what do we have already? Um... Bit of harmonization. It's actually an octaves. So all that stays in the left hand. I'll just play two of them, but it goes. Interesting. Almost always Koji Kondo when he finishes going through sort of a repetition and he ends up on what is that called? The B section? Uh, I think it's the B section. He always ends up going to the four chord. So, in fact, uh, 8-Bit Music Theory has an awesome video on the main Mario um, compositions from Koji Kondo, and it almost always ends up going to um, the fourth on the, the next iteration. Uh, so here we get... major chord F sharp minor uh, E minor D major so if you're thinking in D major it's just the main four chords right but he spreads them out beautifully Beautiful. Mm. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, let's turn the back. So that's a B diminished triad, which would normally go into like a C major or something, but it could also go into There's a lot of things it can it can move to. Diminished chords are actually fascinating uh, as a tool for moving from one area to another, because there's a lot of things they can fit into. If you if you change any of the notes half a step one way or the other, suddenly it becomes a different chord. Uh, but fascinating that I en they end up on kind of this. And it's almost like they just decide to erase the tension. They're just like, um, let, let's move around, let's get lost a little bit, let's make it a little bit chaotic, and then let's just wipe it clean and start over, right? Um, which is exactly how the game works, right? You start off, you get into day three, and you're like, what have I done? What have I not done? Let me deposit my money in the bank, and let's go back to day one, right? Um, so kind of fascinating uh, symbolism there, the way it gets a little bit chaotic, gets lost a little bit, and then it goes, all right, I think we're done. So I missed a note. Okay, so check this out. Uh, so it actually ends up on... And then it goes... So if we add that note in, we get... So kind of same thing applies, but now it's a half diminished or minor 7 flat 5. Pretty cool. Ah, uh, but we're not done yet, are we? Even that sounds pretty beautiful, right? He like sneaks in a major seven chord. You know what? That's not the first time he's done that on Ganon's theme. it up now. Oh, it's in G, no wonder, okay. <laughs> the second note in Ganon's theme is a major seven chord. 
right? Koji Kono kind of likes moving um, parallel notes up against each other and seeing what he gets. And in a lot of those, you end up getting major sevens, and then you end up getting, you know, half diminished and some very interesting things. But it kind of does that here. It ends up resolving to a C dominant chord, but it's goes all over the place and just kind of plays with like parallel tritones. Really creepy. Similar to level nine in the original. Gross. <laughs> wash my hands after that. All right, a lot of your favorites, Wind Waker. what we're getting so it's kind of like a d flat major chord but instead we just get two and five and then we let the melody come in with beautiful i don't know it was in d flat Check out the drums there. It almost sounds like how to train your dragon or something like drum, dum, dum, drum, dum, dum. We're in uh, this either three, four, or uh, six, eight kind of um, moving, grooving jig kind of feel. We get this little. I don't know if it's a flute or what. We, we get what sounds like a uh, violin later, um, some plucked strings, beautiful stuff. And I think it's it's kind of Celtic influenced. If I remember uh, reading a little bit about Koji Kondo's um, uh, direction for this game, each game he says he sort of goes a different um, uh, style, right? It, uh, loves world culture and, and music and loves melding those different sort of flavors of music together. And in this one, I think it was very influenced by Ireland, kind of that area. Skip we won't skip ahead. Bagpipes. <laughs> Check that out. I've never even like paid attention to that. By the way, they're kind of playing the same thing. So we get... Right. And then the bagpipes are kind of going. Kind of playing all the same notes. It's not kind of suspended a little bit, right? We, we get this in the bass over and over and over again. So we never really feel at rest, right? Bagpipes again, pretty cool. So there's our first hint of. Uh, okay, so we are kind of in home there. And by the way, I think this is maybe the same track or similar tracks that uh, plays at the very end 
of the soundtrack um, because they sort of fade it out as you can hear everything else coming in. Maybe it's not the same track, but uh, the other one goes. And starts coming in with the bass. Let's do this opening sequence quickly. Wind Waker doesn't really have a main theme either. If anything, that's it. But let's do a little bit more of the opening. Harpsichord. We're going to get Bach coming out playing. So now we're in A minor. Almost sounds like tribal, right? A little bit Native American sounding, right? Some some fourths, right? Uh, this even um, these chords kind of sounds a little bit that way. Which makes sense because this is kind of like the origin story. By the way, this is cool. I've never really talked about this. Um, where's my pedal? <laughs> That's something I say all the time that you guys never get to hear me say because I would edit it out. But um, And then we get a... Anyone recognize where we do that? in Zelda. but it kind of does the same thing, right? It ends up sounding like a four chord going down to one chord, but it's not. Right? Uh, and it, that, that kind of uh, modulation or, sh you know, tonal center shift happens in the original overworld theme, which is really interesting to me that they kind of borrowed that from this. I've never heard anyone talk about that. It's a little more music theory-y but something that the music nerds like me are like, that's so cool. <laughs> and that's why we're here. We talked about that fully diminished in the Zelda one as well. We get that right after we got the uh, tonicization of the the flat third. Okay, so not much to talk about. It's all the same harmony and chords going on. Um, I really like the instrumentation. This would have been one of the first times we had heard, maybe the first time we had heard this theme with like, I don't know if they're real instruments or if they're still um, um, synthesized. They probably are still synthesized. Um, and then maybe Twilight Princess was a real orchestra. But 
Uh, way better sounds than we got in the original Zelda 1. Actually, personally, I like the 8-bit stuff because I grew up with it, and I think it sounds kind of edgy and cool. Like Castlevania, you play Castlevania main theme on the 8-bit stuff, and then you like translate it into today's music, and it's like, you lost something there. That edginess sounded cool. Um, but in a theme like this with the violin and the harpsichord and the piano and stuff, it sounds beautiful. It really does. <laughs> So I guess it's not the exact same one, uh, but it's similar using that fully diminished sound. So I didn't realize that we talked about those Tears of the Kingdom and all these references and stuff. It's not intentional by any means, but it's in the same key. The um, was it minor? Yeah, 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 it was. No, it wasn't. Right here, we get this. Well, to be fair, I guess we don't know if it's major or minor because it just goes. Right. So it could be major, actually, what it's implying. Oh, and this was the, um, from Zelda two opening, right? That's what I was referencing earlier, the flat six five. <laughs> Oh, that's super effective, uh, to use a Pokemon term. Check that out. So they do a suspended fourth, right, a sus chord. Yeah, that's a thing. So that they can keep playing it when they move up to F, and then drop it when they move back to E major. kind of end that anywhere it's just a fully diminished uh, arpeggio <laughs> definitely synthesizer <laughs> that's not a real violin What a cool shift in, in mood there. I haven't really paid this much attention to this in a long time, but it's kind of like, and the memory vanished. And they play the same theme, but it sounds a little bit different this time, a little bit different instrumentation. It's almost like faded. <laughs>
That's a big thing from Ocarina of Time. The Picardy Third, right? The sun comes out. This minor piece. Suddenly it's happy. Koji Kondo loves that. All right, what's next? By the way, you're a legend if you're still sticking around for this. This is kind of a super long, massive, deep dive into just Zelda music. But a lot of you guys wanted this, so hopefully you're enjoying it. Hey -ya! Hey -ya! Mm. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know what? The twilight reminds me a little bit of like when there's about to be a thunderstorm or there just was and the sun starts coming out. It's this sort of, it, it's this mix of beauty and like destruction or darkness. I don't know how to describe it, but um, I think that the animation captured it perfectly. And obviously the soundtrack I'm a huge fan of, but this game, like working together with those two, this game was so immersive. I've actually... I've never beaten this one either. This came out when I was kind of like high school, getting busy, uh, band and, you know, theater, all kinds of stuff, tennis. And then I went to college and I revisited it, brought my GameCube, never owned a Wii and uh, played through it a bunch in college and never beat it, but I spent a lot of time listening to this opening. <laughs> I think that minute and a half or so is like one of my favorites from any game. Wow. We got to keep moving, guys. Uh, Twilight Princess doesn't really have a main theme. I guess we can do Midnight's Lament real quick. <laughs> Extensions, beautiful. This would just be a minor nine chord, but then we get a an eleven. I don't know. Beautiful. By the way, it starts going really emphasizing that. Raised sixth. Uh, that's just Dorian mode, right? I mean, that Picardy third again, right? You're getting all the same stuff. You're getting the flat six. Let's see, uh, D minor. Flat six, flat seven, one, Picardy third, Dorian mode. You see a lot of the same themes in Zelda music. It's beautiful. Beautiful. There are a lot of themes in this that carry over. In fact, there's a couple of references to this in Breath of the Wild, and I found something super cool, which I'll have to share at a later date. Um, 
where I think some of this is actually from the Dark World theme of A Link to the Past. If you guys can find it, go ahead and send it in the comments. Again, another video. <laughs> Koji Kondo's ability to get lost and then find his way home. Check that out. E flat major seven. A flat major seven. You have to end up on five as a dominant seven chord in order to get back, in order to feel like you're really settled in. Everyone aims for that. So in order to get to this chord, he comes in from, wow, right? He starts off here, ends up here. Let's try that again. <laughs> Sort of a one five one in the left hand. It's the left hand is doing a lot more here, but the seven is in the melody. Sounds kind of D minor y D Dorian y in the in the right hand, so he keeps it sounding like home, but the left hand goes all over the place. Sounds beautiful, gets lost, and then immediately when you hit this, you go, oh, I know where we're headed. I listen to that all day. This was one of the first things I ever looked up on YouTube. I was like a senior in high school, and you, I'm that old, and uh, YouTube was just coming out, and we just got it on our computers. I never really used it, and I found this, and I never really played the game before, and I was like, this is one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever heard, and I listened to it on repeat as I studied during, during school. Um, super cool. I've obviously used YouTube a lot more since then, <laughs> but that was like 14 years ago. It's been a while. Skyward Sword. So I have not played this game at all. I have never played it. I never owned a Wii U. Uh, I just missed it. I mean, I was in college. I was super busy. Uh, the Wii I absolutely got. Played through Breath of the Wild. Played a ton of Smash Ultimate. Um, but this one I never played. I've heard a lot of the music. I love Fee's theme. I love Ballad of the Goddess. I'm familiar with the backward Zelda Zullaby thing. Um, but it doesn't really... I mean, this is kind of the main theme, Ballad of the Goddess. But it, it doesn't... The opening scene we're not going to do. So we're just going to go through this one. You know what? So there's a harpist I'm trying to get on the channel that I think would be absolutely amazing. She could do Sheik's theme. She could do a couple other things. I just realized that this is harp. She's got to learn this. It's not that hard. Okay, so here. D minor. Okay, so we get... A lot of the heart is just arpeggiating. I could probably switch up these settings, but I won't worry about it. So like there. Right, it's a uh, an inversion, right? So three is in the bass instead of. Uh, but the slight differences like that, most people wouldn't hear that if they just played chords, it would be totally fine. You know what? Let's try this. We're gonna play Zelda Zelda by forwards and then I'm gonna reverse it in the audio later. We'll see if it works.
Close enough? Let's try it. There's the fun slope. Now here's the weird thing. I have no idea what that sounded like. Because <laughs> I'm going to edit this later, so you guys have to let me know. talk about the chords here. We're in D minor, I guess. We get a flat seven right off the bat, but then we go to that flat third again, right? Uh, we saw that in Wind Waker. We saw it in the original um, Zelda Overworld theme, but then almost immediately we get a, a raised fourth, which sounds a little bit like So anytime you get one minor, especially in D, D is like the easiest Dorian mode there is because it's diatonic to C major. So get this, this, right? Same thing with. So when we end up going here, it does still have that sort of Dorian sound to it. And what's cool about it is immediately, that's the note that sticks out. And then we change it. And that happens all over the place in Zelda. We're in Dorian mode. We get this sound. Um, for example. Right, Breath of the Wild. Uh, everywhere in Zelda, you get this kind of like clash between a flat six and a raised six in Dorian mode. By the way, what ends up happening, of course, is... Oh, sorry, I'm the rookie. Right, flat six, flat seven, one. Okay, relative major now. Well, so much for going to the four chord on the B section. <laughs> Very similar chords, actually. Big suspension there. Tambourine. That guy's going crazy. Um, the instrumentation sounds pretty good, right? You get the flute and piccolo over the top, some strings maybe, it's beautiful. Very nice. Ah, oh, Breath of the Wild in one of the most iconic scenes ever. Check this out. Immediately we get the Zelda chord, the 
flat six major seven. I haven't even talked about this little chord this uh, stream. I should have. Hmm, a little understated. Wow, uh, the three different, um, you know, we get the light woodwinds, the strings, and then the brass, repeating it three times, kind of more resolute. Uh, awesome. Sounds nice. A lot of... Right, a lot of nines, a lot of kind of moving suspense, just kind of luscious, beautiful chords, like nature, right? I love that moment. That's so cool. It's like uh, a reverse explosion or something. Everyone comes into like one point and then they hit you with this. It's in C minor. Okay, should I spoil a super cool Easter egg right now? I shouldn't, right? That chord progression is the same as the opening to Ori. I'll do a video on that another time. That's super beautiful. We'll keep moving. That one. Oh, okay, hold on. Wow, that makes that a major seven. I never thought about that. It kind of makes like a sharp 11, 9 sound. It could just be circling it around, but then this... I mean, that note stands out a lot. It's kind of making it a major 7 chord sounds really beautiful. Uh, but all that to say that it does kind of the... The flat 6, flat 7, 1 again. Beautiful. And of course, Tears of the Kingdom. Let's go.
Guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my patrons. Let me know what you guys want to see on the channel. And until next time, Zelda Music Theory, out.